Good morning. This is Father Stephen Kelly from St. John's Church in Detroit. We're continuing our series of daily morning meditations, where we generally look at one or another of the lessons that are assigned for morning or evening prayer. What is known as the daily office lectionary. Let's go ahead and bring home the end of the story of the raising of Lazarus. We heard about yesterday when Jesus uh, said, Lazarus, come forth. And he came out bound in his grave clothes with a napkin around his face. And Jesus says to him, loose him and set him free. And so we talked about the miracle of Jesus raising uh, Lazarus from the dead and the comparisons, of course, to his own resurrection um, as well that would be coming in, in, in certain quick time after this particular uh, event happened. Uh, in fact, from this part, we move immediately into the Pharisees and the Sadducees making that decision that, in fact, they were going to have to find a way to, to do away with this Jesus when they heard rumors that he's raising people from the dead. So we're at John chapter 11, beginning at verse 45. Then many of the Jews which came to Mary had seen the things which Jesus did, and they believed on him. But some of them went their ways to the Pharisees and told them what things Jesus had done. Then gathered the chief priests and the Pharisees a council and said, What do we, for this man doeth many miracles? If we let him thus alone, all men will believe on him, and the Romans shall come and take away both our place and our nation. And one of them, named Caiaphas, being the high priest that same year, said unto them, Ye know nothing at all. Now, nor consider that it be expedient for us that one man should die for the people, and that the whole nation perish not. And this he spake not of himself, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus should die for the nation. And not for that nation only, but that also he should gather together in one, the children of God that were scattered abroad. Then from that day forth they took counsel together to put him to death. Jesus therefore walked no more openly among the Jews, but went thence into a country near the wilderness to a city called Ephraim, and there continued with his disciples. And the Jews' Passover was nigh at hand. And many went out of the country to Jerusalem before the Passover to purify themselves. Then sought they for Jesus, and spake among themselves as they stood in the temple. What think ye, that he would not come to the feast? Now both the chief priests and the Pharisees had given a commandment, that if any man knew where he was, he should show it, that they might take him. Okay, so here, here's interesting. They recognize the fact that Jesus is performing these miracles, right? And it doesn't persuade him. In fact, they're more concerned about their own position and place and for the people of the nation, the secular nation, as well as their own leadership and a religious identity, rather than trying to look at the reality that Jesus Christ is in fact that fulfillment of everything that is about the Jewish nation and everything that is about the Jewish religion. Jesus is the fulfillment of him. He's the fulfillment of God's promise to send a Messiah. And so you hear the words out of Caiaphas' mouth that it's expedient that one man should die for the nation. But of course, what he was thinking was that Jesus should die so that the nation of Israel could be saved. In other words, if we do away with this Jesus, because if everybody starts running after Jesus and, and these radical things start happening, like people have, are working on, on love and charity and all those sort of things, apparently they think this will bring the wrath of the Romans down on them. If another religion is introduced that hasn't been approved by the Romans, that somehow the wrath of of the, the Roman nation. They're more fearful of that than they are of actually finding out what God's will is in this particular situation. And so they think if we sacrifice Jesus, then the nation of Israel. But of course, we know the other definition, that Jesus, in, in fact, was the one man who would die for the nation. He would die for the soul of the people who make up the nation of Israel, right? Jesus, in fact, was the one man that should die for the people. And whether the earthly country exists or not, is not what Jesus is concerned with. What he's looking at is the souls of all those people being in a right relationship with God, redeemed by his own precious blood, right? So, so from this day forth, they begin to take counsel and find a way to sacrifice Jesus, not even really understanding that they are ultimately doing God's will anyway. Their evil intention, but God will use it for good. So today is Saturday. Uh, and so we have lots of interesting stuff going on here at St. John's today. We have a retreat for women uh, with the Daughters of the King. That's going on in the morning. Uh, and then this evening at 7.30, there's a concert by the Detroit Concert Choir. Uh, and that's a ticketed event, but if you like to come, they do have tickets available at the door. That's at 7.30 p.m. Uh, and of course, tomorrow we gather for worship here at St. John's. Uh, so God willing, if we don't see you today in church, I hope that we will see you tomorrow. And may your Saturday be full of blessings.